so hush, little baby, don't want you cry. Me di di chi chi cha, me di 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 ja ya, me di 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 So hush, little baby, don't you cry. Jumping in the cotton is high. Oh, yeah, daddy's rich, and your mammy's good looking. So hush, little baby. Don't you Let us pray. Heavenly Father, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant that strengthened by it, our mother, sister, and friend, Margaret Johnson, may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. who love me. When I am gone, release me, let me go. I have so many things to see and do. You mustn't tie yourself to me with too many tears, but be thankful. We had so many good years. I gave you my love, and you can only guess how much you've given me in happiness. I thank you for the love that you have shown. But now it is time I traveled on alone. So grieve for me a while, if grieve you must. Then let your grief be comforted by trust. It is only for a while that we must part. So treasure the memories within your heart. I won't be far away, for life goes on. And if you need me, call and I will come. Though you can't see or touch me, I will be near. And if you listen with your heart, you'll hear all my love around you, soft and clear. And then when you come this way alone, I'll greet you with a smile and a welcome home.
This is a testimonial from Father Max Wolf. Greetings in the name of our crucified and resurrected Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is a distinct honor for me to write representing St. Paul's Church in Nantucket as rector, the Episcopal Parish of All Saints and St. George's Chapel in Rehoboth Beach and Harborson, Delaware, where I served for 17 years and on behalf of our parish's First Lady, as William lovingly addresses her, my wife, Ollie Wolf. We celebrate today the extraordinary life well lived of one of our true community matriarchs, Mrs. Margaret Grundy Johnson. Because of Margaret's generosity of spirit, and through Maurice and William's faithfulness and their ministry of hospitality, we are all blessed with memories to cherish of the love, joy, prayers, feasting, and music we shared on holy days and so many other special occasions. Our imaginations do not have to stretch far to envision Margaret now savoring that heavenly feast like those we enjoyed with her, wearing now a crown that never fades away, jazz drifting through the air. Already she has heard the Lord say, Come, you blessed of my Father, receive the kingdom prepared for you from the beginning of the world. There is a place waiting for us also at that table with her. I always sensed in Margaret that state of grace, that Margaret beamed with a love of God, a love of family, a love of community gathered around her. That love did not die. That love is everlasting. So we do not say goodbye to Margaret today. We say, see you later. We thank God for Margaret joining us and richly blessing us on our earthly pilgrimage as we now commend her into God's perpetual care and keeping until we meet again on the far shore. With love and admiration, Father Max Wolf. In memory of Mrs. Margaret Grundy Johnson. As mayor of Washington, D.C., I wish to express my deepest condolences for the loss of your loved one, Mrs. Margaret Grundy Johnson. Mrs. Johnson was born in Kentucky and lived a long and rich life. As a parent, she was instrumental in developing the guidelines of St. Mary's Mission School in Fort Wayne, Indiana, was a legendary educator and active warrior in the civil rights movement. She embarked on a career as an insurance executive for over 25 years and was known as a fierce advocate for fairness and equitable treatment of others. Upon retirement, Mrs. Johnson enjoyed time with her loving family and a plethora of friends. She was an avid traveler and showered love on those that held a special place in her heart. Mrs. Johnson was also a champion of charitable and entrepreneurial causes in Washington, D.C., Rehoboth Beach, and Fort Wayne, Indiana. She was a practitioner of faith, family, friends, and finances. She always encouraged others to strive to be their very best and relished her role as godmother, matriarch, and nurturer. She touched the countless lives of others through her beautiful spirit. She will be sorely missed by all who knew and loved her. As you gather to celebrate the life of Mrs. Margaret Grundy Johnson, she leaves to cherish her memories, her loving and devoted children, 
Maurice, and Judith. Granddaughters Missy, Anita, and Jessica, and great-grandchildren, along with a host of family and dear friends. May you find strength in her legacy. May her light continue to shine. I wish you comfort during this difficult time. Muriel Bowser, Mayor, Washington, D.C. Good morning. This first letter that I'm reading is from uh, Andre Carson, who is United States Congresswoman, to the family of Mar Mrs. Margaret Grundy Johnson. It is with a heavy heart and a profound sense of sorrow that I express my sincere condolences to you on this solemn occasion. Although no words can fully ease the loss you bear, please know my heart and my thoughts are with you. Though I did not have the pleasure of meeting Mrs. Johnson, I know that she was a remarkable woman, a legendary black Catholic leader, and a local civil and women's rights warrior. I commend her for the, that tireless work and also thank her for her enthusiastic support of my grandmother, the late Congresswoman Julia Carson. Her championship of charitable and entrepreneurial causes also speaks volume about her character, her generous nature, and her legacy. As a developed mother and grandmother, I know that she will be sorely missed and missed very dearly. I pray that the strength of your friends, family, and community holds up and supports you during this difficult time of grief. Though it may be difficult to see beyond today's sorrow, I hope you find comfort in the many cherished loving memories you hold of Mrs. Johnson. It is often said that those who live in the hearts of others never die. May the memory and the joys and the experiences you've had together remain with you in your hearts forever, ever. With deepest sympathies, Andre Carson, a member of Congress. The second letter of condolence that I have is from United States Senator Thomas R. Carper. Dear William and Maurice, I would like to express my deepest sympathy for the loss of your mother, Margaret. It is never easy to lose a loved one, especially one with whom you were so close. I am sure that Margaret will be greatly missed by you, Judith, William, and Jessica, Melissa, and Anita. Margaret touched the lives of many through her work in the civil rights movement and as an insurance executive for over 25 years, as well as her volunteer services and numerous charitable causes in Washington, D.C. She was extremely devoted to her family and her community. And I am sure the positive impact she leaves in Sussex County will carry on for generations to come. Goodbyes are always painful, but I hope that you can take comfort knowing that her spirit will live on through you 
through memories. Please know that my thoughts and my prayers are, in, are with you and your family during this time of sorrow. If my staff or I can ever be of any assistance, please contact me through my Sussex County Director. Sincerely yours, Thomas R. Carper, United States Senator. This is a uh, poem. So family and friends, I had to leave you for a little while. So please don't grieve me and shed wild tears. But, so, but hold your sorrow while remembering the years. I sort out briefly with a gallant smile. And for myself and in my name, live on and do all things the same. Feed not your loneliness on empty days, but still waking hours in useful ways. Reach out your hand in comfort and cheer, and I in turn will comfort you and hold you near. Never be afraid to die, for I am waiting for you in the sky. I may not have had time